Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed from the title, this is what we're testing out today. So this is the Battle Steel Level 3 Plus plate. Um, this one here is rated to stop M855. Um, so we'll see what it does. However, we have tested the Level 4 hard plate from Battle Steel before. It did well, lived up to the reputation and all the standards of Level 4. It performed right there with it. We've also tested the Level 3, which uh, for those that don't know, Level 3 is much lighter. Uh, it's going to be right around three pounds. However, it doesn't stop uh, armor penetrating type rounds. And while M855 is not technically armor penetrating, it does have the steel tip and that can act like it in some armor mediums. So um, the level three is there. It's super lightweight. It's a little bit thicker. It's a little bit more expensive, but won't stop that. It'll stop just about everything else though. We ran some uh, M193 at it, some 308, all of those sorts of things. It was just fine. It's just that uh, green tip gave it a little bit of trouble. So a lot of folks asked me to test these plates here. So these ones are uh, in between level three and level four in terms of weight. These ones came in right at 5.5 pounds on my scale. Uh, they're shooters cut. They're 11 by 14 in terms of size. In terms of price point, they're uh, a little bit more than the level fours because they're a little bit more lightweight, as you could imagine, but they're less than the level threes. Right now, these are, I think, like $160 a plate, which for a level three plus plate that is not steel, it's the cheapest I know of right now. I don't know of anything cheaper. So uh, if it performs as well as it should, uh, it'll be pretty impressive. So uh, the way these lightweight level three plates are constructed is that we have a little bit of uh, ceramic. And then uh, behind that, we have the uh, polyethylene layers, just like the level three has. So in theory, the ceramic should sort of break it up a little bit when the 62 grainers going in, and then it should be caught by the uh, polyethylene. But who knows what will happen. Uh, that's why we test this stuff, right? Uh, I apologize for the sort of bad lighting over here in the uh, shade, guys, but it is hot today here. It is over 110 degrees and like 90% humidity. I mean, like it's the hottest day of the year so far in the Carolinas for sure. So I'm just trying to catch a little shade while I can. Anyway, let's set this up, set the cameras up, and uh, we'll start off with the uh, green tip and see if it, it or rather see if there's any need to continue the video after that. Sorry to interrupt the video from back at the house, but those of you guys who follow me on Instagram know what happened already. We had two cameras go down uh, during this range trip, so it was hot, and two cameras died, which wasn't good, but uh, I didn't realize it until after filming the next two clips of this video. So what we do, we're gonna do next, you guys are gonna see the impacts anyway, so those are on different cameras. Uh, we fire the M855 from this uh, upper right here. It's a 16 inch BRN 180 upper, so Brownells 180 upper. And uh, with all shots during this video, we're fired from approximately 15 feet. So so again, M855 shots coming up next. Uh, you guys are going to see the impacts. Then I went and inspected the plate, talked about it. Nothing penetrated. Um, but again, up next will be 7.62 by 3.9. You guys will see the back face on that. You'll see that where the M855 was, and you'll see there's no impact or no penetration, rather, excuse me, on the backside. So sorry about that. But cameras went down, and I didn't, I didn't know it. And I can't reshoot the footage because I only had one plate. Next up, guys, we're going to run the KS-47 here from Palmetto State Armory. We have the uh, Red Army Standard Full Metal Jacket ammo in there. It is a steel jacket, so that tends to not be good for armor, but uh, going a little slower, of course, than that 855 was. So we'll see how it does here. Same distance, all that stuff. Gemtech, uh, 300 blackout cam out there on the end, and a Hawk scope, one to four, for those wondering, because I'm sure people will ask. Ooh, I tried to go on the edge. That might have been a little too much edge there. Let's see. My hypothesis back there at the shooting position was correct. That was a little too much on the edge. However, it still caught it. So that's cool, right? It definitely worked, but it tore, the, tore it apart before I kind of wanted to for this video. I wanted to wait until the end for that. But what you do see there, entrance wound, no exit wound. It's probably stuck the bullet itself. I can see it. It's probably about a third of the way through the polyethylene. But what you can see here is up towards the front of the plate, that's our ceramic layer, right? And then back here we have these individual layers there of polyethylene that work together to sort of grab everything that comes through there because it's a woven material. Um, so it stopped it just fine, but it kind of broke my box a little bit. Either way, let's step it up. This is actually the rifle and the caliber that I was trying to save the center for. So we're gonna center punch this one more or less here. But what we have here is the Daniel Defense uh, 18 inch V5. OSS uh, can out there in the end and uh, primary arms 
platinum with the Griffin mill scope on there. So it is loaded with M80 ball, so mill spec stuff, and uh, should be moving 18 inch barrel. So, and again, like 15 feet. So we'll hammer it. All right, let's check it out. When I watched that live, and you guys probably just watched it slow mo, I thought it actually went through, but it didn't. Uh, what ended up happening again is the bottom of the plate kind of ripped out because I didn't center punch it because I was just rushing the shot, right? So let's actually do that right this time and uh, see how it does. Let's check it out. In case you weren't aware before this video, M80 ball has some serious energy going with it, especially at this distance. Tore the box up, made a hole in the box. You guys may have thought there was a pass through, but in fact, that was simply an energy transfer that happened with this plate. Now, again, the back face deformation that we see here is much greater than what it would be if it was just a single uh, M80 ball round because we've, of course, fired it with three other uh, rifle rounds at this point. And the ceramic has essentially broken up, right? So let me actually just, kind of let that fall out and you guys can see the ceramic coming out of it um, but there's our impact points and then back back face deformation like i talked about no penetration so it's uh it's lived up to the hype so far for sure at this point the plate has passed so we're just going to do some fun stuff here we have a glock 20 with hornady 155 grain 10 millimeter uh going into it and we'll see how long it just stands up i'm guessing it'll fall over relatively quickly uh but let's do it <laughs> All right, let's go check it out. This is what we ended up with guys as you saw as it went up on an angle and i started shooting into it like this it was actually shooting the polyethylene uh layers out of it so i'm not sure if that's a valid test in any way however one thing you will see here nothing went through that said i'm sure something skipped through if i had to guess there's some bullets right there for sure that's still a little bit warm but yeah 155 grain uh horn to the 10 mil right there stopped and that was stopped looking at it i mean that's at least half of the uh polyethylene still left i can hear a bunch of other bullets in there so they're definitely in there somewhere for sure anyway like we said it passed right and at this price point and the weight it's definitely something to consider um i said in my level three video I personally, um, because of some injuries I've had over the years to my back, I would be very comfortable using the level three. Yes, 855 is relatively common in America, but you know, from the testing I've seen, if it's under about 11 or 12 inch barrel, it's still not going to penetrate 11, 11, a level three rather, excuse me, if I could talk. Um, but if you want that protection from, you know, your 16 inch, the most common uh, AR-15 barrel length in one of the more common rounds from 855, three plus is what you got to get. The penalty you pay is about two and a half ounces and about 60 bucks right now with these two options. So it's up to you guys, obviously what you want to go with, but I would feel comfortable with that plate for sure. I like the fact that it doesn't weigh quite as much, like I said, as a level four, but it is a little bit heavier than a level three. That's pretty much it, guys. If you have any questions about the test, anything that we cover here, you can always post those questions down below in the comment section, as always. Uh, if you guys have questions that you actually need answered, uh, go ahead and message me over at Facebook. I respond to all the messages I get over there. Sometimes it takes me a couple of days, but I do get to all of them. I don't always see them here on YouTube and Full30, Instagram TV, anywhere else that I post, but that's the place to reach me. You guys can also sign up for my email list. I will send out uh, all the videos I do once a week, just one video a week. It's not super spammy. And I will also send out a few good deals that I find. So if these plates go on sale, it'll hit your inbox and uh, you'll have that info ready to go. But even as it is, 
159 bucks for weights that perform like this at this weight. I really wouldn't be too mad about it at all. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. If you're not subscribed, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.